Welcome to Sweethearts or Rivals. I'm Sharla. I'm Justin. What's on our table today? Near and far. Near and far, you can play with two to four players. Yep. And they recommend the players be aged 13 and up. You got it. You can play within about 90 to 120 minutes. Yeah. And this copy is published by Red Raving Games. And this is a review copy that they sent us. Thank you very much. And it was a surprise because we thought we weren't in the shipping area for review copies. Yeah. So, so that was super exciting when this showed up on our doorstep. It is. Thank right you. On. Thank you. Excellent. So what we're going to do is we're going to swap the camera around so you can see the crazy awesome big setup of our game. And then we are going to play through our sixth game in the campaign mode. Right. So there will be spoilers. That's right. However, there's a lot of different ways you can play the game. You can play a random game, a character game, a campaign game. Um, and we could show you just a random game that would have no spoilers, but we felt, and a lot of our fans agreed, that to show off a campaign game would really show off a lot of the strengths of where this game sh shines. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're going to do. So again, spoilers, but the way the campaign works, there might not be as many spoilers as you would think. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So... And we'll explain that as we go through the game. All right. Let's switch it around. We'll be right back. We're back. We're all set up. Yes, we are. Who are you playing? I'm playing Sparkles. She's a sassy librarian. Ooh. And she's got some special abilities. Yep. She's a gem trader, so she can use gems for money. Cool. But she can't use money for gems. Yeah. And she's also lore. She has a skill lore. So at the end of the game, you would normally receive negative points for any of the artifact cards that you have in your hand. Mm -hmm. She can have up to three in her hand and not receive any negative victory points. Cool. I am playing Glass because he's got this cool shard of glass in front of his face. And Glass has a bunch of experience points that he hasn't spent yet. So he's only got one special ability, which is meditation. And Glass can use food for hearts. During yeah. adventures? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yep. Uh, we have been playing the campaign mode, uh, which means we start on the second map and we move through the next 10 maps um, with a character that we've created. Uh, going through the kind of campaign storylines uh, on our way to find the Lost Ruins, which I guess is going to be on the last map. Okay. Um, anytime that we successfully complete a story mission, we get one experience kind of check Square. mark. Yep. Yeah. And I'll see if I can get this really close. This is our character sheet. Whenever you get three of them, it gives you one of the experience points, the stars. And then at the end of each mission, you can, if you have enough, you can spend them on new character abilities. Um, also, anytime you complete a mission where there is a side quest, you write that on your character sheet. So I actually have a side quest coming into this game, number 18, which means the very first um, story mission that I get to, I'm not actually going to do that one. I'm going to do my side quest. Which means for me to ever find out what that quest was going to be, we're going to have to play this again. So that's one of the ways that, yes, there's going to be spoilers for this specific map, but not all of them. There's a lot of the quests that aren't um, even done in a two-player game. And there's going to be at least one of them that's never going to be revealed because I'm going to do a side quest. And who knows if that side quest leads to other ones. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of brilliant. And also on the back of your sheet, you might have some keywords. Yep. Like, I have copper. So if when we're reading a mission, copper is a key word trigger, mm. you're going to read something different than you would read if you didn't have that word. That's right. And I have Nizra and Ritual. And that has been very interesting because there's an ongoing narrative connected with those keywords that comes up again and again, mm -hmm. which is very amusing. So... Um, you are first player. Mm -hmm. You get to go first. Well, I need some money. Yep. 
So why don't I just go over here, because I can move into the mine. Yep. And you need a hand to be able to build a tent there. One. Yep. And I have one from my kitty cat. There you go. So I'm going to put my tent here. Okay. And you get what's in the column and the row, so I get a dollar. Okay. And I uncovered this dollar, so yep. I get another dollar. There you go. And as much as we would like to just play this game forever and go all over the map, um, the game is over when you get rid of all of your tents. So there's a bit of a race aspect to the game because whoever gets their tents done first kind of triggers the end game. Or sometimes you want to stall how many tents you put out because True. you want to get on the map and do the different missions. Yeah, and there's a lot of things that you can put your tents out for. Yeah. Okay. So you do that, which means if I want to go to the mind, it means I have to duel you, which yeah. I don't really want to do. So instead, I'm going to take a look over here. I am going to go to the saloon, and I'm going to spend my $3, because that's all I have, and I'm going to get this mystic character, which has two hearts, an eyeball, which means I'm very good at scrounging, and two hands, which means I'm very good at skill. And I put it here because it doesn't go on my board just yet. And he's going to shuffle and then get a new one. And all of these are two-sided. One side is for near and far. The other side is if you want to play them um, in above and below. There we go. I still need more money. So I'm going to come over here mm -hmm. to the general store and get a dollar. There you go. And, and now I'm going to buy one of my cards because you can buy one of your cards at any time. As a free action. Cool. I'm going to buy this for $2. Nice. It's funny, I thought it was $3. So now whenever you go to the saloon, you're going to get a, a one food. food. Cool. Yep. Nice. My turn. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go adventuring. So we go to the map. We're in Dreamar. And as soon as you go adventuring, you get to rearrange the people that you have here on your adventuring group. And then you get to calculate how many hearts. So I'm going to have four. And my adventuring group has two eyeballs and three hands. No uh, fight. No fighting whatsoever. Good luck to you. Yep. Where am I going to go? Well, I think I need money. And I've got a movement speed of two. So I don't think I'm going to go that far, to be honest. I think I'm just going to go one right there, spend three hearts, one, two, three, and I'm going to put out a tent right there. And that tent spot is a coin spot, which means I get to take my two eyeballs and get two coins from putting tent on that spot. And I reveal the coin here from that, so I'm going to get one there too. And then I'm done. So I'm going to go over to the saloon, Yep. which gives me a piece of food. Here's a piece of food. Thanks. And I'm going to get the green flag person Ooh. for $3. Nice. This person only gives you one heart, but you get a fight, a hand, and extra movement. Nice. And somebody else comes out. That person right there. Cool. My go? Mm -hmm. I come back. I am going to go to the farm because at the farm I get one piece of food for every hand and I've got three of them so I get three pieces of food which is a nice lovely fish I'm done I am going to go adventuring okay you and dream are so because this person has a green flag I have to move my kitty cat because he has to go or she has to go on the green flag Yep. I'll just put the kitty cat, it doesn't matter where, right now, mm -hmm. on the next one. I have three hearts. Cool. And I have a movement of two plus one is three. Nice. So you're at Dream R. Mm -hmm. Where are you going to go? I have a movement of three, but for every circle you skip, you have to spend a heart, and I only have three hearts. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I need to get some stuff to get more stuff. So yep. I think I'm going to go just to here. Yep. And do some looking around. I'll get one gem. One gem. And that costs you three hearts and a tent. When I get another dollar. There you go. Thanks. That's a good idea. I'm going to put my tent down so we can see it better. 
I am going to go to the saloon right there. And I'm going to spend $2 so I can get this lizard guy because he's got two hearts, another eyeball because my tents will be better out there. And he's got a shield, which means whenever I go past these threat markers, I can ignore them. I'm going to come back. Okay. Because I have no hearts left. Yep. And I'm going to go and get a pet. A pet? Nice. Mm -hmm. For a gem, so I can get a turtle. Turtles are awesome. Or a tortoise. Yep. Or a turtle. <laughs> turtle. There we go. So I can put my turtle here. Yep. Tur turtle. Mm -hmm. And that means now I can carry a magic card if I get a treasure. Because mm -hmm. you need a guy to carry it, I guess. Or a turtle or a bird person. So, and also, it's going to allow me to skip one town for free. Yeah, that's awesome. And get some, like, treasure cards going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's cool. It's your turn. It is my go. What am I going to do? Um, I don't know, because you're in the spot I was going to go to. Oh, so, well, you I have to do me. Yeah, I don't want to do Duel that. Do me, do nah. me. <laughs> I'm going to go to the mine. Um, and I've got three hands. So I'm going to take my tent, and let's put it... Hmm. Let's put it on that two spot to the right of yours. Because they have to like touch. Yeah. And that will give me a gem and a coin. And because I revealed another coin here, that gives me another coin. So I've got three coins and a gem. Nice. I'm done. So the person I want from the market mm -hmm. costs money that I don't have. So I think I'm just going to go adventuring and see if I can get some money. There we go. So I don't have any people to rearrange, but I get my three hearts back. Yep. And I think the best place to go get some money is right here. Nice. So in order to get that money, I'm going to have to build a house. Three hearts. Which is eating up my tents here. <laughs> and I still only have one looky loo, so I only get one dollar. Coin. My Ouch. Thanks. There you go. I'm going to come over here to the stables and spend my one gem that I just picked up to get myself a tortoise. Because turtles are cool. And I am done. Like bow ties? Like bow ties. I need more money, so I'm going to come here to the general store and get uh, money. There you go. I'm going to go adventuring. Which means I get to take this guy and put him here. So now I've got six hearts. Yeah. That's heart-tastic. That is heart-tastic. Where am I going to go? Hmm. So I can go to my tent. And then I can go past that threat and ignore it. And then I can go all the way up here to Vitria's airships. Without spending any hearts because of my tortoise. That is cool. So that's where I'll go. And then I take this and I put it here. Because I'm going on an adventure. Normally, I would be going on adventure number something seven, 87. But because I have a side quest, it's side quest 18. Are you ready for the reading? Side quest 18. Duda. You meet a scaled, white, deer-like creature with long, thin horns of red. The creature limps, and you notice that its front leg is cut and bleeding. Oh. If you have skill seven, charm the creature into letting you help it. Okay. Combat five. Take the creature for me. I'm gonna I'm gonna do skill seven. I'm gonna help. Okay. Because I'm awesome. Yep. So I need seven? You need seven. I've got three already. So you need four higher. Four, five, six, seven. Eight. eight. Nine for the extra bonus. Because the extra bonus comes at two? Two more. So I will spend a heart so I can have the bonus. So, charm the creature into letting you help it. You clean and dress the leg. The creature nods and seems ready to join you on your journeys for a time. Ooh. You get a blue faction. <gasps> Take faction it. token, yay. You gain the card Ikra. You get the I-K-R-A card. So the story cards are not random, they're very specific. So I just got Ikra, which gives me plus one to all skill rolls, plus one journey point for every two unused gems at the game's end. Oh my goodness. Ooh, that's nice. Cool. 
So you also gain two reputation because you got nine points. Yay! I like reputation. Reputation's awesome. And it doesn't look like you get any more um, side quests. Okay, so that side quest is done. I can cross it off. Because I was successful, I get to keep the book. And I get to fill in one of those experience point squares. And that was awesome. One of the reasons why that's awesome is because with this faction token and this faction person, if I get more mystic faction people, they're going to be cheaper. And if I manage to get four total, I'm going to get that five point chief. Yeah. Not but the chief only gives you points at the end of the game. True. And an extra flag for like buying more blue people. Yeah. Not that I'm going to go for that, but I could. It's an option. Awesome. And then I spend one, two, three, so I can put out another tent, which is going to give me gems. Three of them. Look at you rolling in it over there. Yeah, that was cool. And I am done. I need to get another person, so I'm going to go to the saloon. Nice. And I get another piece of food. Another piece of food. Here you go. Thanks. Yep. And then I'm going to buy Mr. Top Bun over here. Mr. Top Bun. Yep. He costs four dollars. I have four dollars. Nice. And some of you is coming out. Okay, my go? Yes. Excellent. I'm still adventuring and I'm wondering if I should continue. Hmm. I don't know. You can't build any tents, but you might be able to get another story. I'm just going to come back. I come back and I go to the mine. Because I've got three hands. So I could take this tent and put it on the three spot next to my other tent and get two coins. So why not? Two more coins. And then I'm going to spend four of them to get my first artifact which is a merchant coat. When I'm trading at the town hall, I can trade twice. Like cheating. Like nice. And I'm done. I adventure. Shara is adventuring. So I get to put man bun here. Man bun's out. Yep. Nice. Sun's out. So I'm going to go on my way down this way and get a treasure card. Nice. Oh, I forgot. Six hearts. Yep. So you get a treasure card. Sleeping potion. You may ignore one threat per turn if you do gain one food. Nice. That's cool. I gotta find something to spend this food on. I can trade it at this spot. You can. So I um, don't have any money, so I might as well use three of my hearts to build a tent. There we go. And then I can get three money. You have three eyeballs? Oh, whoops. I can get two money. Two money. Two eyeballs. There you go. And now that I closed it off with two tents, yep. you can't get any more treasure there. Nope, that pass has been completely explored. Right, but had I not put a tent there, mm. people could still pass there and get some more treasure. This is true. Your turn. My turn. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go right here to the stables and spend another one of my gems to get another tortoise because now I can skip more spaces without using hearts and have more movement and possibly have more treasure cards. Right. I am done. I'm going to go here and have an adventure. Ooh. So you take this little book. Yep. And you don't have any side quests? No. Nope. So that means it's going to be quest number 81. So it's time for Charlotte to have an adventure and when I took the book I opened it up and realized that the adventure that I just did, my side quest. I did it wrong. Yeah, did. I read the wrong one. <laughs> she, she, she went to the wrong section. So she actually did quest number 18, which is from a different map, instead of the side quest. Sorry. That's okay. Cause it, just because it would be too confusing to try to figure out what I got, what I shouldn't have got, now that stuff's changed. So we're just going to kind of leave it with a small mistake. So we spoiled quest number 18, but not side quest number 18. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, well. Why good. do we always make so many mistakes? Mm -hmm. I don't think we make that many mistakes. Well, enough that I don't like it. Yeah. But now we're going to quest number 81 on the dried sea. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm okay. 
a woman approaches you at Talia's Inn. Oh, that's where you are. Cool. Excuse me, she says. I'm about to embark on a scientific journey to discover the last of an ancient species. Oh and I'm looking for some seasoned adventurers to come along as bodyguards. You all look pretty tough. What do you say? I'm a librarian. <laughs> you got some... I have to fight. Yeah. Man yeah. bun there looks pretty tough. Yeah, he does. Skill seven, join her. Mm -hmm. Skill five, it's funny. You all look tough and there's no combat. In no, this they want skill. Yeah. Convince her it's too dangerous. Oh, my. Skill seven, join her? Yep. Skill, skill five, five. It's too dangerous. I only have two skills. So if I want seven to join her, I have mm -hmm. to roll five or higher. Yep. Or use a whole bunch I of hearts. I have three hearts. And I have a feeling that seven to join her will give me some side quests and it will be way more exciting. Ooh. Maybe. I don't know. That's what I feel. Yeah. In my gut. Yeah. So let's roll and try to get five or higher. Okay. And I have three hearts to spend. Even though go. I want to put a house there because it's a trade route. Yep. But you got to risk it to get the biscuit. There you go. Do that. Five! Nice! So I got seven. I didn't yep. get the nine for the extra, but that's okay. I'm okay with it. You're okay with not getting the extra? Why is it really good? Mm -hmm. Not going to get the extra. Okay, though. Because I want to keep my three hearts. <laughs> okay. So, uh, you join her. As you journey, the woman who you learned is named Dr. Samant Saminda. Saminda? Yeah. Tells you excitedly about the creature you, you're hunting. How exciting. It's a distant relative of the giant fish that lived here when this whole area was underwater. Oh my goodness. But it adapted to live on land. <gasps> Officially, the scientific community doesn't believe that it exists, but I'm ready to prove them wrong. Me too. Nice. Plus one reputation. Oh, that's nice. A blue faction token. Nice. And on side quests, Q19. At least you know where to read them from. <laughs> there you go. And because you were successful, you get one of your um, experience points. Which things. means I get a star. Nice. And I get to keep the book. Yep. Cool. Um, and, and I'm going to spend three to go. put out a tent because it's a trade route. And trade routes give you extra points in the end. Yeah. Lots and lots of peppers. Where's the other pepper? I don't want you to see. It's way up there. You see it. I do. Okay. All right. So it's my go. Uh, where am I? I'm right there. What am I doing? I need another person. So, oh, I don't have any money. Can I get some money over there? So I go back to the mine. I've got three hands, so I can put a tent on that spot just below mine, and it will give me two coins. And now I have three bucks. Okay. I was hoping my adventuring would give me something so I could come back and like... Buy stuff? Get a turtle or uh, a turtle or another person. Yep. I have two coins. Mm. I guess I'll just come back here and get a dollar. Get a dollar? Because you're in the mine. Here you go. Okay. I'm going to go to the saloon so I can buy a person. I got three bucks. So I think I'm going to buy this guy right here. Oh, wow. You didn't get this guy. He's really well-rounded except for his hearts. Oh, that's right. Hmm. You're right. He doesn't right. have any hearts. You're right. No, I do want that guy. Oh my goodness. Why did you change your mind? Because <laughs> you're right. That I, I Somehow I completely missed that guy. But he's got like everything except hearts. I thought he was your favorite guy. He is kind of my favorite or guy. Or she it could be a girl. It's not showing their face. True. It is hard to tell. Here we go. That's Farmer Mitch. Yep. I'm going to go to the mine. Okay. I need heart. I need money. I need gems. I don't want to use another tent up, but... You're gonna. I have two hands. I'm gonna put it on this two here. Okay. A gem and a coin. And it gives you a reputation. That's nice. I'm going adventuring. And now I got a nice, lovely, full party. Although one of them is my dog. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven hearts now. Yeah. And I'm going adventuring. Where am I gonna go? Hmm. I'm going to my tent, skip that, skip that, and go there to the last stand. Let's do that.
And I'm able to skip all those spots because I had a tent along the way, and then I had two turtles that let me skip those spots without spending hearts. And I've got a dude with a shield, which meant let me get right past that threat. And I'm at the last stand, which means it is quest number 89. You climb the shale cliffs, leaving the cracked, dry seafloor below. The trail opens to a wide shelf where a vicious battle rages. Oh my. Copper Empire soldiers fight their own comrades, clashing with sword and spear. One soldier shoves another over the cliff. Captain Nishria is surrounded by holding her ground. You traitors, you cowards, she screams, lashing out with her sword. His majesty will hang you all! Oh my. Combat 7. Ooh. Attempt to stop the fighting. Skill 6. Take what you can from the soldier's supplies <laughs> in the chaos. <laughs> Oh, I don't want to fight. I'm not good at fighting. Fighting is my weakness. So, what was it, skill? Skill? Six. Yeah, let's do that. Eight for the bonus. So I've got one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight. Oh my goodness. For the bonus. So, you take what you can from the soldier's supplies in the chaos. You've heard plenty of things about these invaders and warmongers. So you feel a little guilt. Relieving them of some heavy packs. Awesome. You get negative two reputation. Ah. Uh, you gain a green faction flag. Green faction token. You get two food. Two food. Ooh, nice. A coin. A coin. And a gem. And a gem. And that's it. And one experience point. That's a bummer with the reputation. I did not want to lose reputation. Yeah, that's too bad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I'm going to spend three of my hearts to put one of my tents out. And that was on a trade route, and I am done as your go. First things first, I'm gonna spend money to get Singing Skull. Ooh. Two money and one of uh, the gems. Cool. When I am at the saloon, I gain one reputation. Nice. So every time I'm there, food and reputation. That's awesome. I'm one dollar short to get the person that I want. So I think I'm going to have to go get a dollar. Okay, dollar? Yeah. Can move to that spot. I can move to the next spot and skip that threat. But if I want to get to that spot, with the peppers. Why would you want to go to the peppers? Well, if I let you go to the peppers and complete the trade route, you'll get 10 points. But if I'm I go there, gonna go to the peppers. we'll complete the trade route and both get three. All right, so I was able to jump past two spots and two threats. The two spots don't cost me any hearts because I got two turtles. And the threats, I've got this lovely lizard guy who has a shield, I can just ignore threats. Now, if you don't ignore threats, you get points and your tents go away. But I'm okay with just ignoring that. So I'm gonna spend three hearts, one, two, three, and I can put out another tent, which gives me a gem. And I get to put it on that trade route. I'm over here struggling with hardly anything, and you're like, got it, a million things. I got lots of stuffs. Hee hee hee. And that's it. I'm done. I need to get a person. Okay. So I'm there. So I get a food and a reputation. Nice. There you go. And I want to get a person that costs three. I feel like I need more hands and more hearts, so I'll go with this yellow flagged person. Okay, I come home. Okay. And I go to the saloon. The saloon is the one place on the board that if there's multiple people, a duel does not happen. So we don't duel. Okay. I spend one food. And I wipe all of these away. That's good, I didn't want to spend my food to do it. And then a bunch of new people come out. And then, I'm going to pick myself up a mystic and I have a mystic and a mystic thing which means this only costs me no money at all well I really need some stuff to do anything so I think I'm gonna to have to go on an adventure so this guy goes here Charles on an adventure and three and three and three is nine and I'm gonna to go to the gem town this one here? Yes. Okay. And I'm going to put out a tent. 
How many eyeballs you got? I have two Lucky Lou's and I uncovered a gem, so I get three. There you go. That's it for me. I'm going to go to the mine. And I've got one, two, three, four hands. Which means I can go there and I can get a gem and a dollar? Mm -hmm. Let's do that. And a reputation. And one reputation, which is good because I lost some reputation and I'm not happy about that. I think I'm going to go here. Ooh, you I get, get a treasure. I get to skip that, but I get a treasure. Yep. Unfortunately, I didn't get to pick up another turtle. Mm. So if this is not better than this, I have to discard it. Yep. A fishing pole. Gain one food when you buy an artifact. Hmm. I'm okay with not getting food because I'm getting a lot from that. I'm going to keep my teapot. Nice. And you get an adventure? I do. It's adventure number 90. But I have side quest 19. Ooh, so adventure number 90 is not spoiled. Side quest... 19. 19. Is spoiled. According to my research, says Dr. Saminda, there is about a 50-mile range where the creature could live. We can set non-lethal traps with foods it might like, or we could concentrate on searching for signs of the creature. Tracks, scat, dismembered carcasses, etc. Which approach do you think would be better? Skill 5. Make non-lethal traps. Skill 8. Search for signs of the creature. Hmm. I'm kind of thinking traps. Non-lethal traps of skill 5? You think I should do the bigger one? Mm, how many skills you got? I have three skills. Ooh. I have a lot of hearts. Yep. Yeah. It would be nine to get the bonus on the big one. It'd be ten. Oh. Skill eight. Eight. Ten for the bonus. I would have to have. I would have to roll a seven, which is a six plus hearts. <laughs> oh, that's funny. What you doing? The food. The food make non-lethal traps. You discover one of the traps. I oh, have to sorry. roll. <laughs> you have to roll, I forgot. <gasps> mm, I could have done the big one. So you got nine. Nine. Okay, well you get the bonus. You discover one of the traps empty but torn apart with clear set of tracks leading away from it. You get a red faction token. Yay. You get one food. Yay. You get an extra two food for the bonus. Oh my goodness. That side quest is done. Mm -hmm. To cross it off. And you get a new side quest. 20? Number 20. And you get an experience point. Oh, right. Nice. Mm -hmm. What else are you going to do? I'll build a tent. Okay. So I can get some more money. I got to get some resources or I'm not going to be able to do anything. Hmm. I only have two lucky lose, so I get two dollars. There you go. I go to the saloon where I am going to get another uh, member. It's going to be another blue one, and I'll just get this frog guy because he's free. But I have three mystics and a token, which means I get the tribal elder. No. It's going to give me five points at the end of the game. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, I don't want to waste these three hearts that I have, so I think I'm going to move one, yep. two. I can skip one because of my tortoise. Yep. And I can look at a new card. Maybe yeah. it'll be more exciting than that. Nice. A slingshot. I get an extra fight. Cool. Yeah, I'll trade that for that. Nice. And then I'm going to use... Whoops. I'll use my three hearts to build a tent here. Okay. So I can get two more dollars. Two more dollars. There you go. Or money. Right on. My go? I think so. Okay. Before I do anything, I'm going to get myself another artifact. It costs me my blue faction token, one of my coins, two of my gems, and two of my food. And now I have the cauldron. I gain a food whenever I visit the mystic's hut. Which is what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to visit the mystic's hut. And I get three of these. And I get to keep one. What treasures do I get? Scented oil plus one reputation when you visit the general store. Ooh. 
Old Shovel, when you build a camp, pay one food to gain one coin or one gem. And the Travel Diary, gain one food when you successfully keep a quest. I'm going to take the scented oil because I like to smell nice. And because I'm at the Mystic's Hut, I gain a food. Well, I'm going to come back to town. Mm -hmm. It's really hard for me to get gems to get the tortoises, so I'm actually, I have all this food. I might as well just get the pet pa pack bird. bird. Right on. I go. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go to the general store, please. I gain a coin and one reputation because I smell so nice. I'm gonna go here and do some trading. Ooh, you have to duel the robot guy. So when you're dueling, uh, you have to choose if you're going to fight dirty or fight honorably. Honorably. Okay, so we roll. I rolled a one. I have five. Plus all your weapon stuff, which means you win really well, which gives you a point of reputation. Hooray! And now you get to go there as normal. So I have all this food. Mm -hmm. I want to get a gem. Yep. So I can trade two food for one gem? You can indeed. That's what I want to do. Two food. One gem. You could also, if you want, get rid of one of the artifacts from your hand, and you can spend money or gems in order to gain or lose reputation. I would, but I need all this stuff. There you go. And I want to keep these cards because I have that special lore ability. That makes so sense. So if I don't buy them, it doesn't matter. Alrighty. I'm going adventuring. Of course you are. And I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hearts. Yeah, and I've got a bunch of food, which is good. Do I want to switch out? I don't think I do. No, I don't want to switch out. These guys are just going to sit there for no reason whatsoever. So I've got one, two, three, four, five movement. So I can go one, two, three, four, five. I've skipped two spots, but I've got two turtles that let me do that. And I've gone by some threats, but I've got my shield guardian dude. So I can stop at that spot. And I can spend three hearts, one, two, three, to take a tent and build it there. I have four eyes, which means that's going to give me four coins. And I'm going to trade this in so I can get a lovely silver five coin. And I am done. I need more eyes. Mm, that's eyes my awesome. problem. I need more eyes. Yep. So let's go get some more eyes. I'm there so I get food a and a food. reputation. There you go. Because you have a singing skull. That's neat. Yeah. And then I'm going to buy... A red one because it will round out my party. Nice. And I think this is the best red one because it'll give me some eyes. Yep. And it'll give me a hand and movement. Nice. And more hearts than that guy. And you have a red faction token, so, so it only costs you a buck. One dollar. Nice. And now I think I have enough money mm -hmm. and resources to get my mega artifact card, Ooh. which is the rusty robot. Cool. So that. Yep. Three money. There you go. Four of these. Yep. And two food. You just had exactly what you needed. Cool. So, it's going to give me eight points in the end, which is nice, but also two fight, which is also nice. Yeah, because now you have one, two, three, four, five. You got five fight. You can go battle like crazy. I will. Cool. I mean, we'll see. <laughs> So then it is my go again. Mm -hmm. I wasn't quite going the right way to finish my trade route. But that's okay, because I get to go to the Haunted Lighthouse and have an adventure. And it's number 89. Maybe I'll just go finish your trade route just like you finished my trade route. Maybe you will. We'll see. 89? My bad. It's actually 85. That's okay. Camping atop a jagged coastline of a dried up ancient sea, you are in awe at how many derelict vessels lie broken in this one place. Cool. It makes you wonder why a lighthouse didn't guide them all to safety instead. <laughs> and just then you see the remnants of a giant lighthouse on a raised outcropping backlit by the sun's setting sun. Cool. It's miles away. You sleep uneasily that night and are awakened at midnight by sounds of screaming and the smashing of ships on rocks. In the moonlight, you see a ghostly firelight dancing on the shore as more ghost ships approach the breakers. Wow. Skill 6. Investigate the ghost ship's wreckage in hopes of finding treasure. Cool. Skill 8. 
Oh. Light a torch and lead the ghost ships towards the lighthouse and oh. safety. Let's do that. Okay. I'm a hero. Okay. Okay. So I need eight? You need eight or ten if you want the bonus. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. ten. So you get the bonus. <laughs> I can get this. You bonus. light the torch and lead the ghost ships toward the lighthouse in safety. In a moment, it's clear to you. Long ago, treacherous wreckers lit fires to draw unwary merchant ships to their doom on the breakers, thereby spilling their precious cargo. The ghost ships are now fated to repeat their final moments of terror each night. But with your party lighting the torches and running along the coast. The ghost ships have a new beacon to follow. Instead of revisiting their dark fate on the rocks yet again, the ships turn to follow you. And when you finally make it to the lighthouse and wave your torches frantically from its broken height, you see the ancient ships sail clear of the rocks. Their ghostly crew wave back safe at last. Nice! I'm awesome. You gain two reputation. Woohoo! You gain... Thankfully, a blue, a faction token. Yay! Because you already have that person. I needed another one anyway. And a gem. Sweet! And I completed that quest, so I get another experience point, which is what I needed to get my next star. I'm pretty sure I was waiting to get my fourth star, so I could get something really good this turn. Or this, this, this campaign. Um, okay, and then I spend three hearts. One, two, three, and I build a tent. Which is going to get me a bunch of gems, I believe. I get four gems. Ha ha. That's not fair. Because I, I need the gems. You need the food. We're yeah. all mixed up this time. I'm just happy doing what I'm doing. Uh, of course, I am all the way at the Haunted Lighthouse, which is the end of that path. Which I'm really far away from where I wanted to go. You don't have any hearts left anyway. Yeah. Sure go. We didn't replace that guy. We did not. I was too excited about my adventure to the Haunted Lighthouse, which was really cool. I think I'm going to adventure. Going to adventure, okay. So I'm going to trade out my kitty cat mm -hmm. for this guy. Lizard guy, yeah. Or yep. gal. Nice. Mr. It Shovel gives Man. me the same eyeballs, but I get an extra movement and an extra hand. Yeah. Oh, the cat had a hand too. Hmm. I guess I'm just gaining a movement, but that's good too. Yep. And that makes her. My person go here. Cool. I have a lot of movement. Two, three, four, five, six. Nice. But I don't have a lot of skipping over things. Mm. And I only have nine hearts. Only That's nine hearts. Three tenths. <laughs> or two if I have to spend some to get by stuff. Yeah. But look at this. I have one, two, three. Yep. And I'll get a treasure. Yep. Gain one food when you visit the Mystic's Hut. Well, I can hold it, so I'll put it there. Even though I don't need more food. Kay. I went one, two, three, four. I can go two more. I'm just going to go one. There we go. And put a tent, and I get still just two money. Yeah. But I'm well on my way to finagling that. Hmm. Yeah. I'm going to come home. And I am going to go to the town hall right here. Do I get anything when I go to the town hall? I don't get anything, but I can trade twice, where normally you can only trade once. But first, I have to duel. I'm going to duel honorably. Oy. Three. Two. So I spend a heart for three. And I spend a food for another heart, because I can do that, because I have meditation, so that I win with a four and gain a reputation. All right, so I'm here, which means I can do stuff. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to spend one dollar. I'm going to spend one gem to improve my reputation by one point. So now I'm up to level six. That is nice. The trading is a little odd. You can trade up to five things in order to buy one thing and everything has like a value. Or you can trade one thing in order to get five things, which is kind of odd. 
But what I'm going to do is I'm going to trade this um, green faction token and one gem. And that will give me a trade value of six. six to buy one thing, which is going to be this yellow faction token. And is there anything else? Because I can trade twice because of my merchant coat. Is there anything else I need to get? I don't think there really is. So I think I am done. Except now I can buy my cloak of stars. It is a blue faction token. It is four of the gemstones, six of the dollars, and a reputation level of six, which I have. Uh, it's going to give me 12 points in the game and plus one point for every mystic I have recruited. I'm done. I can see how my game is south of his game. <laughs> so, I'm adventuring. Charlie's adventuring. I can skip one thing for free. Yep. So I'm going to go there. And I'm going to fight the bandits. Oh, you got a threat. Mm -hmm. Sweet. You need a, a, a fight of four. One, two, three, four. Do I roll? You don't even have to roll. Because it would be one or higher. And you get a gem. Oh, that's nice. Cool. And you can keep going. And I'll just... Put, well, I'm not going to because I can only skip that one for free. Oh, yeah, yeah. One, two, three. Yep. Another tent. Yep. I don't want to end the game too soon, but I might be. Two coins? Two of the coins. Nice. All right. I'm, I want to go adventuring soon, but first I have to go over to the farm where I'm going to get one, two, three, four of the food because I need food for no reason whatsoever. Okay. I'm done. Okay. I'm debating on whether I should finish his trade route or not, but if he finishes it, he'll get 10 points. Hmm. If we both, if I am on one end and he's on the other, we'll get three points each. Yep. I feel like him getting three points and me getting three points is better than him potentially getting ten points. Yeah. Which he probably would go for. He's got a lot of movement. Yeah. So let's just do that and I'll get an adventure. Okay. Side quest 20? Yes. Ooh, so quest number 88 for this map is not spoiled. You stand outside of a deep, dark cave. You can hear a loud growling coming from inside. This is it, says Dr. Saminda. I'm sure this has to be the creature, the descendant of the carnivorous giant fish that roamed this ocean. Combat six, run in and attack the creature. Oh, that sounds mean. Skill nine, attempt to lure the creature out of the cave. I don't have skill nine. <laughs> I have skill one, two, three. I'd have to roll a six. <laughs> I'd have to roll a three at least. <laughs> Combat how much? Six. I have four. There you go. But that seems mean to kill the creature. Hmm. You do run in and attack it. Maybe I'll just attack it non-lethally? I hope so. Are you I, attacking it? I, well, I don't know. <laughs> like, my skill is way worse than my combat. You have five attack. Oh, yeah, because of my slingshot. Yeah. It seems stupid not to attack. Okay. But it seems mean to attack. Mm -hmm. I'm going to lose reputation. Maybe. <laughs> I can get a three or higher on the die if I do the skill, because I can. Then I won't complete the trade route. <laughs> oh, choices. <laughs> Tell me it again. Skill what? Skill nine to attempt to lure the creature out of the cave. Mm -hmm. and Combat six to run in and attack it. Oh my. I've already lost the game. Skill nine. You're going for the skill. Okay, uh -oh. do it up. Five. Yep. Eight. Nine. Nine. Nice. Well done. <laughs> Do you want to spend another two to get eleven in the oh, bonus? Oh, two. It's only two. I was thinking it was three. Yeah, I can't build the house anyway. Yep. Okay. So you get skill eleven. You attempt to lure the creature out of the cave. You place some old rabbit meat in front of the cave and wait patiently. Eventually it comes out of the cave. It's some sort of scaly, strange-looking creature on four legs. How cute. It eats the meat and sniffs the air, and when it notices your group, it runs towards you. You're prepared to run, except it seems excited rather than vicious. I didn't expect it to be so friendly, says Dr. Saminda. 
She studies it for a while, but when it comes time for you to part ways, the creature insists on following you. <laughs> it's fine, says Dr. Samida. It clearly likes you better. Maybe I can find another one. You get a blue flat faction token. Hooray! I already have a blue one. Uh, you gain two reputation. Two reputation? Yep. And you gain the dogfish card. The dogfish card. Roll one extra die each time you must roll a die and take the highest result. Nice. One extra movement. And he's lucky. That's cool. That is cool. Nice. And you also get an experience point because you completed another quest. Thanks. Well, that, that worked out okay. Yep. And it opens up the chance for me to go adventuring and get that. Ten points. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I go adventuring! I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hearts. There we go. And where am I trying to get to? Wow, i got to get all the way over there. And i got a movement speed of one, two, three, four, five. If I went down this way, one, two, three, four, five, I'd get some coins and i get closer. But if I go this way, one, two, three, four, five, I'll get a treasure card. Let's do that. So I end on your tent, and I get a treasure card. And I'm done. Sleeping potion. Ignore one threat. Gain a food. Here you go. I have to come back to town because I don't have any hearts left. Yep. I'm going to go here, mm -hmm. and I'm going to get a password. Nice. And if you can get a treasure card, you'll get five points for the end of the game. Nice. Okay. One, two, three, four, and I can make it there. Ooh. But at least you don't get an adventure. <laughs> I get ignore a threat, so I get a, a food. And I can skip both those spots because of my two tortoises. And then I spend three hearts. One, two, three. I get to put that out to complete my trade route. And I get a gemstone for that, on that uncovering that tent. And I am done. I'm gonna go to the Mystic's Hut. Okay. So I get three and I can keep one. Yep. So another slingshot. Ooh. Two points if you have the most unspent coins at the end of the game. Oh my. Gain two hearts. Let's go with this one actually. That's cool. Yeah. You have money, I don't. Yeah. Hmm. Here you go. My go. What am I going to do now? I'm going to go one space to the right, to that gem spot, and spend three hearts to put a tent there. And that will give me four more gems. And then I believe I have enough to get another one of my items. It requires four gems. I just got four food and reputation of four which I have and I had get the jade flute gain two food when I visit the stables and I am done I'm gonna go here okay and I'm gonna build uh, right there cool so I'll get a gem and a gem two gems and a reputation nice and that's it and you only have one tent left. I do only have one tent left. Wow. Okay. I know. So I'm going to move one, two, three, four, five. Uh, one to the left. This way? Nope. So down. One. Left. Two. Left. Three. No. Nope, three. Way. Yep. Down. Four. And then there. Five. There we go. So I move there. That's as far as I can go. And I skipped one spot, which I can do. Yep. I did skip a threat, so I get a food because of my sleeping potion. And I'm not going to build a tent there, because there's no point in doing that. I just stop and I'm done. Hmm. I can see where you're wrecking some of my plan. <laughs> I'm going to go here. Yep. One, two, three, four. Ooh, you're going honorably? Yes. Makes sense. I roll a five. I have six. You win. Reputation for you. I'm going to trade in one of these okay. for $7. You now have seven points to buy up to five things. 
Um, I want money. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're gonna food, I guess. There we go. And I'm going to use some of this money here to improve your reputation. Yeah, so I need one, two, three. One, two, three. Wow. Max reputation. That's cool. I guess that's all she can do. Uh, you can also get rid of an artifact card if you want to get rid of it. Of course, you don't have to. I don't have to. Yeah, you don't have to do that. Am I go? Yep. I'm going to move one space over there. And I'm going to go on an adventure. That's what I was going to do in next turn. <laughs> and I could get all the way there. Yeah. Quest number 94. A thin sparkle of cold rain wets your face as you ascend a grassy hill. Atop an outcrop, you spy the Red King at the ancient doorway of a oh ruined temple. New cracks appear each time he slams his fist against the door, banging methodically, working to break his way in. Oh Combat 8. <gasps> Attempt to stop him from breaking the door. <laughs> Skill 6. Wait for the king to break the door and raid the temple when he's gone. Wow. This would have been a good one for me to get. Too bad you got there first. That's right. And you're the one that let the Red King out. Ooh, spoilers. <laughs> so, a combat eight? Mm hmm Or skill six. six. I have to do skill six. Mm hmm Because I have one sword. Yep. And my skill is one, two, three, four, five. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's a bummer. Yeah, it is. Six. So I got six, and let's see. You would have to spend two. Uh, I can spend one, and then one, because I can spend food for hearts. Six. So you waited for the king to break down the door and raid the temple when he's gone. Yep. The red king charges through the stone door in an explosion of rubble, disappearing into the dark temple. Moments later, when the wind and rain have cleared away the dust cloud, he emerges. An elegant glass-skinned woman walks at his side her statue body gleaming like polished porcelain the two of them barely notice your presence leaving you to head east across the dried seabed you explore the ancient rooms of the temple and find a few bits of treasure dismissing the sour dread in your stomach <laughs> that's horrible and i got the bonus yep minus three reputation ouch that's a red faction. Red faction token. Two coins. Two coins. And one coin for the bonus. One coin for the bonus. What a bummer. All right, and I get another experience square. Oh, that's a bummer. That's such a bummer. Well, I am going to finish and get the juggling knives so I don't have anything left to minus points. It's going to be my yellow faction token and two coins. So that is done. I got all my artifacts out. And I will spend three of my food for three hearts so I can put out this tent which is going to give me four coins. And I'm done. Okay, it looks like I'm adventuring. Charla's adventuring. So I have one million movement, mm -hmm. not really, two, uh, yeah, two, five, six, seven, eight, but I can only skip one thing for free. Yep. I have nine hearts. Nice. So let's go one, two, three, four. I can only skip one of those coin spots, so I lose a heart. Yep. But I passed two threats, so nice. I'm going to do two threats. Oh, and there goes all your tens. Mm -hmm. Nice. So you need a fighting of five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that's yours. And your tent goes on it. And the next one you need a power of six. Five. Six. There you go. And one of my extra tents goes on this one. That's true. And then I'm going to spend one, two, three to put out a tent yep. where I am. And get how many eyeballs you got? Two eyeballs. So you get two gems. gems. And that was your last tent. And I was first player. So yep. you get one more turn. I get turn. one more turn. And I've got no food and no hearts left. Which means I can't adventure, which really sucks. So I'm going to go to the mine. And I've got one, two, three, four. 
So you could do this one. I really wanted that one that gives me a gem and a reputation. You could go there for a reputation. Let's do that. There's my last tent. Gives me one reputation. And one gemstone. And one gemstone. And that was the last thing I could do. I'm done. We're done. So now I get to count up the points and see how much Justin won by. <laughs> Okie doke. Okay, in the end of the game, the first thing you do is you count how many camps you have placed out on the board anywhere. And you get one point for every camp. How many did you get? 16. Nice, because you placed out two extra. I only get 14. The next thing to do is trade routes. I think we completed two trade routes, but we both got in on them. So we both get six points. Then you count how many points your artifact cards were worth. 33. I had 13 this time. Ouch! Uh, the next thing we look at is, uh, oh, if you have any artifact cards in your hand, they're worth minus one point each. But I, not for me, because I'm lore. There you go. And I don't have any. The next thing is threats. So you get to look at the points for all the threats you took over, and you get those points. I got zero. Five doesn't catch up with 33. Okay. Uh, some of your treasures and artifact cards are going to give you bonus points at the end of the game. Two points if I had the most money at the end of the game. I have five dollars. Ah! I have four. Um, I do have the Ikra, which gives me a journey point for every two unused gems. Although you shouldn't have it because I made that mistake. Oh, it's true. And then I get one journey point at the game end for every misc dick that I have recruited, which is the blue ones. And I've got three. So, five. Uh, the next thing we look at are coins, gems, faction tokens, and chiefs. You take all your coins and all your gems and add them together and divide by two. Uh, and that's how many points you get. You divide by two. Four. Me too. You get one point for every faction token you have not used. One. One for me too. One. Uh, then you look at chiefs. Chiefs give you five points, so I got five. Mm -hmm. And then you look at your reputation, and you get points based off of that. Oh, right. I got seven. And I've got two. And then you look at your player board. So we both got two points for getting rid of all of our tents, and you get five extra for having all three treasures. That is it. You add it together, and that's how many points you get. And then, because we're blue in the campaign mode, we mark it here. How do we do? So unless I added wrong, I got 59 points. Very respectable 59 It's almost, points. Se almost 60. There you go. And Justin got 72. Woohoo! Almost 70. So I only lost by like 10 points. <laughs> 72 points. Not the best I've done, but very close. Um, let's see. Not the worst I've done. But close? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's funny. And I've got four stars. And you've got two? I have two, so I think I'm going to save mine. Yeah. But you're probably going to get a new power for the yes, next time. Yes, I am. I am. That'd be awesome. cool. So now we can do our impressions. Yes. Your impressions are near and far. What do you think of it? I like this game. I agree. I concur. It's a really interesting game because you feel like it's an epic, sweeping adventure. Mm -hmm. But once you start putting your tents out, you realize you have to be really picky about where you're putting your tents. Yes. Because all of a sudden, you're like, oh my goodness, I only have two tents left. And like, I want to do six things that I have to have tents for. Yeah. Like, that's the hard thing about the game, I think. You can't do everything you want to do. Yeah. It's really hard to balance getting your tents out there to get the stuff, to get the people to go out and get more stuff. Yeah. Because once you put your tent out to get stuff, you can't like save a tent to go do trade routes. Yeah. Because when you do a trade route, you're not getting stuff. Yeah. And sometimes when you do adventures, you're not getting stuff mm. to improve like your adventures and stuff. Yeah. So it's a tricky, tricky balance, but it makes it really exciting to play. Yeah, there's like a tension because there's a bit of a race to get your tents out, even though sometimes you want to hold back to get certain things done first. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, there's definitely a race to get out adventuring with a good party before the other players mm -hmm. so you can get those story adventures. Yep. And, of course, your tent's out. 
in the right places. It's funny because the last time I played with my character, like I had a really good strategy. She got a lot of eyes to look for things yeah. at the beginning. Yeah. I focused mainly on trying to put Tencent in gem spots because she has the gem trader. Mm-hmm. And then I focused on getting cards and like getting points from my cards. Yeah. And then focusing more on attack with my cards. Mm-hmm. Which I should have probably did that strategy this time. Yeah. But I didn't. <laughs> it was still fun. Yeah. Uh, my character can spend food as hearts, which is something I always use. I always get some food before I go out on adventuring because it mm -hmm. helps. And I think when I spend my four stars on my next ability, it's going to be one that lets me get more food, mm -hmm. which would be cool. So there's a bit of a strategy there. Yeah. A little bit of engine building. Yeah. Yeah. I really enjoy the adventuring. Um, in a two-player game, there's only seven adventures. But there's a whole lot more spaces on each map than just seven. So that means the next time we play this map, it's not going to be the same as this time. Because there's going to be a different seven. Plus, with the side quests, there were a bunch that we didn't get to see anyway. Mm -hmm. So At first I thought... The whole adventuring linked specifically. It's not random. Specific numbers for specific maps. I thought that was going to be like, oh, well, that's not going to be very replayable. But it totally is. It is. And I love that the adventures are not, like, random. As soon as you hear what kind of um, choices you have, you'd be like, okay, if I take that choice, I'm probably going to lose reputation or gain reputation. Oh, if I, like, go to the temple and, like, just check it out, I'm probably going to get gems or money. And then the faction tokens aren't random either because each faction is associated with stuff. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing something all mystical, you're probably going to get a blue token. Right. I still have a hard time to kind of clue out which token I might get from what adventure. Yeah. Because one choice over the other could give you a different color token. Yeah. Which... I had a hard time to get the yellow ones this oh, time. The nomads. Right. Yeah. But I never would have had enough money to buy that anyway. But that's mm -hmm. another 14 points I could have got Yeah. had I been able to get some yellow factions. Yeah. But since you only had two tents, mm -hmm. I didn't feel like I should spend a lot of time here trading to try to get them. Yeah. I just wanted to end it so he could not get more tents out. <laughs> yeah. Um, the adventuring, I believe, is far superior than the adventuring in Above and Below. Because mm -hmm. I find that one is just random. It is. Um, it's cute though. Like I oh like yeah. the little stories and I like the world we're in. Yep. I do enjoy the stories yep. and the adventuring. Yeah. But yeah. This one's it's far It's more superior. fun. Like you get a map and mm -hmm. there's a overall story like that Red King guy. Like yeah. he showed up earlier on and you kind of know his backstory a little bit. Yep. Like there was even an adventure on a previous map that I went on that had a keyword. And the keyword said, if another player has the keyword, this stuff happens. Mm -hmm. And it had to do with the Red King, which you let free. <laughs> and then it messed me up. Yes. Yeah, like things like that. That is It's really cool brilliant. how they interconnect. Yeah. yeah. And yet still aren't going to be crazy repetitive because there's so many stories that you don't get to see. Especially you if you're only going to play like us as a two-player game. Yeah. So that's just a ton of replayability. And again, that overarching narrative of us trying to get to the ruins is really well done. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, as you get your experience points, you can build a character for a specific strategy. Which is is going to make the game, as you continue playing it, get better and better. Like, I can't wait for my character to have, like, this engine building of gain food all the time and then spend it on heart so I can adventure further and farther faster. It's going to be awesome, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Like, my character has a really good engine, too. With her, I can spend gems like money. Mm -hmm. And then I really just have to remember to do the general store and get cards. And resources and just get points from cards. Yeah. And not so focused on hands. Mm hmm Do the whole cards give me the fight. Yeah. 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 Um, there's a lots of different strategies you can do depending on what you build for your party. So for this game, I had one sword. 
because I had a guy that would let me completely ignore the threats, so I focused on lots of skill. Mm -hmm. And it can work to a point, unless you have specific adventures that it would be better to fight, like the last one I went on. Mm -hmm. But you can still build that strategy for the most part. Yeah. Uh, there is also a really good strategy in having as well a rounded party as possible, mm -hmm. which is cool. And then little things that are quite neat, like if you have, like if you've bought like one Mystics, so you have one blue guy in your party, it makes getting other blue guys cheaper. Mm -hmm. But you can only ever have one blue guy in your party. On your, yeah, yeah. on your adventure. So do you go for the four that get you the chief, which is five points. That's a lot. Or do you get a well-rounded party and not do that? So there's some choices there, which is neat. Yeah. It's hard to balance. Yeah. Which makes it a challenging game, which is fun. Mm -hmm. Um, some of the reviews that we've seen for it that reviewed it less favorably, um, they had some legitimate points, but I think a lot of those points had to deal with not the campaign, just the one-off game. Yeah, and see, we haven't, we really dived into the campaign. Yeah. So, I really, like, we did play the starter game. Yeah. And the other stuff we haven't touched yet, so we can't speak to that stuff. Mm. But I've really been having fun with the campaign. Yeah. So that's why we haven't touched the other stuff yet. Yeah. And I can see the random game um, where the story isn't like an overarching narrative. It's just random stories. I can see it being not as fun mm. as the campaign. Um, or even the character one. There's The campaign, all the stories are driven by the maps. If you play the character one, there's specific characters that you're given and they have character driven stories. Mm -hmm. So I can't wait to get into that because again, it's going to be this overarching narrative, mm -hmm. which is where this game shines. It's really impressive, like how there's just how they've done that with the stories. Yeah. Like the amount of work that had to have gone in to make that storybook. Yeah. Mind boggles me. Yeah. And all its interconnective hopping around through all. Yeah. 10 maps yeah it's crazy like if I undertook something like that I could see myself just getting really really confused at some point and, and discouraged and it's like I am lost yeah but it's amazing like how well it's put together for that so yeah. far that we found yeah it actually boggles my mind a little bit that they did develop the random game in case you did all of the stories <laughs> then you, at least you could have a random game so everything would be random and the story wouldn't matter, but I don't ever see us needing that. We just never know. It depends on how many times we get to play it. Yeah. True. And I mean, it would be good if you didn't want to spoil any of the stories for if you had some friends come over and they just wanted to try the game out. Mm -hmm. We could do that. But the campaign and the character, the, the whole overarching narrative is just so awesome. Mm -hmm. Can't see me wanting to play this any other way. We'll see. It depends on how many times we get to play it. True. A lot, probably. Yeah. And this was a review copy. Um, can you see us ever getting rid of it? No. No. <laughs> Not at all. No. Yeah. I think this is, so far, my favorite of the Red Raven games. I really like the Ancient World. Yeah. The Ancient World is good, too. But I just, I love the story I don't, so much. Yeah. Like, I don't know if I could pick. Because there's sometimes that you're just really in the mood for a story-driven game. And then there's just sometimes you're in the mood for a Euro game. True. And the Ancient World is a really tight Euro game. Yeah. And this is a really awesome story game. Yeah. So I guess it just depends on what you're in the mood for. There you go. I still like this one better. I love them both <laughs> equally. <laughs> Can't see us ever getting rid of the Ancient World either. Because that is an awesome game. I really enjoy that one too. Yeah. But near and far. Awesome. Mm -hmm enjoy it so do we finish it as sweethearts or rivals we finish it as i'm rivals, rivals. with you because you're way better at it than me <laughs> and sometimes i'm playing the game and i look over there and i'm like how did you get all that stuff yeah like it was my lack of eyeballs in this one that really hurt me but you don't struggle at all with it yeah that's where the rivalry is with me yeah, and there's enough like tense racing to get certain things, mm -hmm. 
the first one to get to the stories, the first one to get your tents out, the first one to get like to the trade routes. There's enough of that without direct confrontation mm -hmm. that makes it a good rivalry tense game. And the race helps. Yeah. Um, the only direct confrontation is when you have to duel. And even that, if you lose a duel, you don't really get like too crazy of a penalty. No, and I think we don't have to duel a lot because in a two-player game, like you never mm -hmm. really blocked. Yeah. You're like, well, I was planning on going there second anyway, so I'll just go there first this time, and then I'll go there after they're done. Yeah. Like. Which is cool. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So, that's near and far. It is. Thanks for watching. Thanks a lot. We'll see you in the next video. Later. What is this code word? Healing. No, you can't do that, Bob. If you're going to be a pain. Keywords. Keyword. You're going to have to go. There you go. And for the bonus. What a bummer. <sighs> There's a blooper. <laughs>